Use appropriate hand tools and test equipment. CHS 7 and 8, week 2. Performance standards. Tools are used according to task undertaken. All safety procedures in using tools are observed at all times. Malfunctions, unplanned or unusual events are reported to the supervisor. Proper use of tools. Proper use of ESD tools. The purpose of an anti-static resistrop is to equalize the electrical charge between you and the equipment. The anti-static resistrop is a conductor that connects your body to the equipment that you are working on. When static electricity builds up in your body, the connection made by the resistrop to the equipment or ground channels the electricity through the wire that connects the strap. The wrist strap has two parts and is easy to wear. 1. Wrap the strap around your wrist and secure it using the snap or velcro. The metal on the back of the wrist strap must remain in contact with your skin at all times. 2. Snap the connector at the end of the wire to the wrist strap and connect the other end either to the equipment or to the same grounding point that the anti-static mat is connected to. The metal skeleton of the case is a good place to connect the wire. When connecting the wire to equipment that you are working on, choose an unpainted metal surface. A painted surface does not conduct the electricity as well as unpainted metal. Parts of anti-static resistor strap A. Adjustable anti-statics wristband. B. Strap stretches to 6 feet. And C. Alligator clip for connection to the ground. An anti-static mat is slightly conductive. It works by drawing static electricity away from a component and transferring it safely from equipment to a grounding point. 1. Lay the mat on the workspace next to or under the computer case. 2. Clip the mat to the case to provide a grounded surface on which you can place parts as you remove them from the system. How does an anti-static mat work? 1. Operator is grounded as charge passes through the wrist strap into the coil cord. Second, coil cord is connected to the 10 mm grounding stud. And third, the static charge passes through the mat, through the grounding lead to earth. Reducing the potential for ESD reduces the likelihood of damage to delicate circuits or components. Proper use of hand tools. A technician needs to be able to properly use each tool in the toolkit. This topic covers many of the various hand tools used when repairing computers. Screws. Match each screw with the proper screwdriver. Place the tip of the screwdriver on the head of the screw. Turn the screwdriver clockwise to tighten the screw and counterclockwise to loosen the screw. Screws can become stripped if you over tighten them with a screwdriver. A stripped screw may get stuck in the screw hole, or it may not tighten firmly. Discard stripped screws. Flathead screwdriver. Use a flathead screwdriver when you are working with a slotted screw. Do not use a flathead screwdriver to remove a Phillips head screw. Never use a screwdriver as a pry bar. If you cannot remove a component, check to see if there is a clip or latch that is securing the component in place.
caution. If excessive force is needed to remove or add a component, something is probably wrong. Take a second look to make sure that you have not missed a screw or a locking clip that is holding the component in place. Refer to the device manual or diagram for additional information. Phillips Head Screwdriver Use a Phillips Head Screwdriver with cross head screws. Do not use this type of screwdriver to puncture anything. This will damage the head of the screwdriver. Hex Driver Use a hex driver to loosen and tighten bolts that have a hexagonal six-sided head. Hex bolts should not be over-tightened because the threads of the bolts can be stripped. Do not use a hex driver that is too large for the bolt that you are using. Caution! Some tools are magnetized. When working around electronic devices, be sure that the tool you are using have not been magnetized. Magnetic fields can be harmful to data stored on magnetic media. Test your tool by touching the tool with a screw. If the screw is attracted to the tool, do not use the tool. Part retriever, needle nose pliers, or tweezers. The part retriever, needle nose pliers, and tweezers can be used to place and retrieve parts that may be hard to reach with your fingers. Do not scratch or hit any components when using these tools. Caution! Pencils should not be used inside the computer to change the setting of switches or to pry off jumpers. The pencil lead can act as a conductor and may damage the computer components. Proper use of cleaning materials Keeping computers clean inside and out is a vital part of a maintenance program. Dirt can cause problems with the physical operation of fans, buttons, and other mechanical components. On electrical components, an excessive buildup of dust will act like an insulator and trap the heat. This insulation will impair the ability of heat sinks and cooling fans to keep components cool, causing chips and circuits to overheat and fail. Caution. When compressed air is used to clean inside the computer, the air should be blown around the components with a minimum distance of 4 inches from the nozzle. The power supply and the fan should be cleaned from the back of the case. Caution! Before cleaning any device, turn it off and unplug the device from the power source. Computer Cases and Monitors Clean computer cases and the outside of monitors with a mild cleaning solution on a damp, lint-free cloth. Mix one drop of this washing liquid with 4 ounces of water to create the cleaning solution. If any water drips inside the case, allow enough time for the liquid to dry before powering on the computer. LCD Screens Do not use Ammoniated glass cleaners or any other solution on an LCD screen, unless the cleaner is specifically designed for the purpose. Harsh chemicals will damage the coating on the screen. There is no glass protecting the screens, so be gentle when cleaning them and do not press firmly on the screen. CRT Screens to clean the screens of CRT monitors, dampen a soft, clean, lint-free cloth with distilled water and wipe the screen from top to bottom. Then, use a soft, dry cloth to wipe the screen and remove any streaking after you have cleaned the monitor. Clean dusty components with a can of compressed air. Compressed air does not cause electrostatic buildup on the components. Make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area before blowing the dust out of the computer. A best practice is to wear a dust mask to make sure that you do not breathe in the dust particles.
blow out the dust using short bursts from the can. Never tip the can or use the compressed air can upside down. Do not allow the fan blades to spin from the force of the compressed air. Hold the fan in place. Fan motors can be ruined from spinning when the motor is not turned on. Component Contacts Clean the contacts on components with isopropyl alcohol. Do not use rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol contains impurities that can damage contacts. Make sure that the contacts do not collect any lint from the cloth or cotton swab. Blow any lint of the contacts with compressed air before reinstallation. Keyboard Clean a desktop keyboard with the compressed air or a small handheld vacuum cleaner with the brush attachment. Caution! Never use a standard vacuum cleaner inside a computer case. The plastic parts of the vacuum cleaner can build up static electricity and discharge to the components. Use only a vacuum approved for electronic components. Mouse Use glass cleaner and a soft cloth to clean the outside of the mouse. Do not spray glass cleaner directly on the mouse. If cleaning a ball mouse, you can remove the ball and clean it with glass cleaner and a soft cloth. Wipe the rollers clean inside the mouse with the same cloth. Do not spray any liquids inside the mouse. Thank you very much. Easy now, I need to go down. Easy now, I need to go down.